Hi everyone, on today's More Than Words, I'll be talking with three musicians from India, from the band As We Keep Searching. Hi everyone, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Monica. Good to see you. We are so far apart right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is quite a distance. It is. So I'm in Portugal, you're in India. It's I've seen from Google Maps, it's like 87 days walking. Do you think maybe I should try that one day? Oh, wow. We can start. I never, I, I never we'll thought about that. We'll see you in October. We'll see you in October, so you can start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, like it's a great time to come to India. October is a great time to come to India. A lot of festivities. Okay, I'll have that in consideration. So, um, as we keep searching, it's been around for six years, spreading your beautiful music around the world. How's it been for you to take your music outside India? It was fantastic. Like, the whole experience of going out of your country. Initially, when we were starting out, just going out of our own cities and playing in a different city within India used to boost our excitement and motivation to some other level. And then when you cross borders and go to a place uh, with music, which is uh, completely different in India because postdoc was never known in India for the longest time. It was very niche and it took time. And having Hindi vocals with it and then going cross borders and then playing to a completely new set of audience. It's just, it's just inspiring. We, we, we still have all the memories intact. It keeps coming into our songwriting again and again. Mm -hmm. That's really nice to know. And I know that you have a mission to spread positivity and um, around the world or across the globe to your fans. That's very important to you, right? Yes. Yes, it is. I mean, it's, one of the things we've always tried to incorporate in our music from the time all of us have started writing music together, um, it is just to try and portray whatever are the genuine emotions that you're going through and uh, show it in as much of a positive light as you can so that, I mean, uh, so that it's received positively, so that the perception is that way. Exactly. And I've read somewhere that for you, of course, it is important to, to make your fans happy with what you're doing. But most importantly, you have to be happy with what you're producing, right? For the music that you're putting out there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, any, any musician would always listen to himself first, but never at the same time take into account what your existing fan base is like. But at the end of the day, as long as we are happy with it, it doesn't... Uh, I think I, I think that is the whole process, you know. No music goes out until and unless musicians themselves are happy. And mm -hmm. for us, it is very important to get into that space together as a band and then start writing songs, tweak lyrics. And we are already in the process, by the way. I'm so fresh and talking about it because three of us are writing our next album. So, so we are in the pro. Yeah, we we are really excited. The whole excitement, you know, like it, the time comes when you have released music and you play that music again and again, and you get kind of bored, you know, playing the same songs, even though crowds crowd might want it again and again. But for us, it's like every day back to back playing the same songs. We need more inspiration. We need something new in our lives and music to us is the best gift so it just keeps us happy so by the time the song goes out we are so satisfied with the song that uh, we let it out to the world which is a very courageous step for every musician or any artist i believe yeah that's completely true um sambit you were the last one to join uh, as we keep searching how's it been so far I can say I'm the last one to leave the band also, but <laughs> uh, jokes apart, uh, I've been a huge fan of uh, not just these two boys, but the whole um, band as we keep searching because I met them at a point of time where I was also kind of touring uh, with another band I used to play back in 2015 called the Ganesh Talkies and 
there at one festival. Uh, I think it was Van's New Wave. Uh, that's where I met the band, and I was completely blown with the music because it was so fresh. The whole sound, uh, the whole perspective that they took towards stage presence. It just felt more pro than uh, a young band kind of coming out. Though they were, I mean, not age-wise, but uh, I think maturity-wise, at that time they were pretty young. And but what blew me out was their the whole production, the sound, the heaviness. Um, at the same time, the whole simplicity, the amount of uh, importance they gave to simplicity at the same time and clarity. I must say, which I think a huge round of applause goes to our, our brother Adiraj for mixing the band for so many years. with such clarity so that's something that i was attached to i was drawn into and i i remember uh, they came down from stage and I, i i went and i didn't even give them time to take a breath you know i went down i went to deepan and i was like i i really enjoyed your performance and that's where i mean immediately we both connected we started laughing we started cracking jokes and that's that relation kind of stayed and which is why i told the band when uh, gotham their ex drummer kind of left that don't announce me coming in because i was already touring with them i was playing tabla with them uh, we were together in music production in exchanging ideas so i was already kind of with the band so it does not i mean other than just one extra social media post i it didn't really matter much so i was because i was already part of the band the news was that uh, someone left the band uh, and that and think that that was enough and the band kind of received it well and we've always been good friends we always um either talking uh, exchanging ideas or fighting or putting in new music but we are talking to each other every day i think that's what matters and yeah i mean we are a family who just stay a little apart from each other because they are in goa and i am in calcutta which is actually two completely opposite sides of the country but we are i mean we still somehow kind of connected with our mischievousness and our love towards each other so that connects us so uh udipan for you how important it is for you three to be friends to be a team working put up sir on mute mic is on mute your mic is on mute probably oh sorry <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, so i was i was laughing no i laughed for a bit so i didn't speak much okay. so uh, i think like nothing is uh, fun until unless we are friends because every step otherwise would get so hard just to be in the same van for weeks and weeks and months and looking into each other's face again and again if we are not friends i don't know how we would have done that or how we would do it so mm-hmm. definitely friendship is important and uh, just just like when you are trying out lot of fragrances you always make it a point to smell coffee beans so that you neutralize things i think our fights are those you know like we are friends but we fight yeah. so that we get back to songwriting and everything back again you know like the circle starts from yeah, zero again you can't appreciate the good without the bad can you yeah and and friendship is like we don't talk about friendship friendship but i think uh, because this band like i have i'm the only founding member here and this band has gone through three uh lineup changes and uh that's why i've asked you specifically about this because yeah. being a founder you know that better than anyone else right yeah and uh, this this group of three of us have clicked because we are in the same age group first of all our mentality and our thinking is similar to each other and also our friendship has lasted for 5 6 years now it it, it is it is what we value and with time and with experience and being on stage together we have definitely we always carry those memories with us and we never take it for granted which brings us back to friendship fighting songwriting <laughs> touring so, uh, yeah i know that for you uh, you think that creating art individually it's quite easy but not exactly the same for creating art as a team so who does what in your team Oh so a uh, lot of things changed with uh, our last member leaving he was doing most of the production bit and stuff and uh, but we picked it up very soon and fast because we were really excited and we were not ready to give up anything anytime soon so for now uh, none of us do one task 
so it's like diy to the core and everybody is involved in everything even if someone is not doing a task but in the conversations he would be involved mm -hmm. and for now sambit handles the music uh, bit in which songwriting restructuring programming and most of it, the ideas so if i have an idea probably i'll just record it on my <clears throat> phone sorry and then send it to sambit and sambit will take it to the computer spend the night and send us a scratch and then we'll work on it because we are working remotely we are not in the same rehearsal room yeah. robert it handles the pandemic right before you were together yeah mm -hmm. i know this band sta actually started uh, we were quite advanced in the whole we were always prepared for pandemic we started as a remote band okay. we always yeah. used to write songs being in different cities for the longest of the time like for two and a half years of our initial year uh, starting out as a band i was not in the same city as robert or the past members we were all in different cities yeah. so this is something which we have always done so we are definitely used to it but uh, yeah robert can i i am basically mostly in the whole management and talking to people bit and uh, yes and uh, whenever songwriting happens then definitely every one of us becomes a musician but my primary goal is to network talk about tours see how the band progresses in terms of management bit i think robert can say what he does so i i handle the social media the mailing list and our merchandise department so those are the three areas that i generally focus my work around mm -hmm. and i know that you manage your time between as we keep searching mm -hmm. and other projects when you when you play the bass so how yes. do you do that it's very different styles right metal and post rock and indie rock i mean it's all one taken from the other uh, yeah it, it just gets a little heavier i guess but the way i see it every single band that i i mean i'm playing with three bands right now they are uh, you are expressing the same thing just in different dialects i mean for me that's the way i look at it the music that we make you relate to it a lot across i relate to the music across all three bands it's just a slightly different way of expressing that and putting it out okay um, but time wise it's uh, i mean we manage everything whatever we can but of course yeah. yeah and since you love what you do you're not even working right you're just having no. fun yeah <laughs> Exactly. So, Samit, you may have been the last one to join as we keep searching, but you're probably the one with the longest musician career. Is it? I don't know. I really, <laughs> I really can't say. But uh, the only, I, only musician in the band, you know. No. Yeah. I, I, was, uh, I, I knew this would come up at some point or time, and which is this company? It's not true. This is this is one of his jokes. But yeah, mostly. I mean, I've been. uh playing for a long time because i come from a musical background so it never kind of felt like a career so yeah okay so i know that your father is a musician you've played since a very early age with him and you yes. also have experienced other instruments typical from india yes yes yep okay yep. do you bring that influence to as we keep searching i think that's what brought me to the band uh it's the uh it's the, as i told you when we met in goa the first thing that me and udips kind of because we uh and that night you know what happens after parties we had a lot of uh, influence in in our uh, in our blood and we were really uh, we really gelled well and that festival was a disaster because nobody came to watch so the only people watching uh, the gig were the musicians who came that's it and they only came because they were given tickets so uh, that's how we kind of gelled in so me and udipan we kept talking that how do we um, make this relationship how do we bring this spark that we've had uh, on stage um, and that's when he i told him that i also play the tabla which is a native uh, not indian instrument i mean it's actually an iranian instrument influence which came with the uh, tribal people but it's popularly i mean popularly known as the north indian instrument the tablas so that's when i told him that i also play the tabla so we and i've never played tabla actually anywhere uh, for any musician any band and he was like wow you i mean if you're up for it and if you were um, ready to perform tabla we can kind of make something that's when 
I think the second album released uh, before release. That's when he called me before Zia happened. That we have a few songs. Uh, let's collaborate. Not just tabla. Whatever you want to do. If you want to uh, play percussion, if you want to play tabla, if you want to play tambourine, whatever. So he sent me the songs, and we were constantly in loop. We were meeting for other gigs, um, and we were constantly talking. And that's I think that's how the whole connection of uh, with as we keep searching happened. And I toured with them. I played tabla. Actually, as we keep searching, is the only band where I have played tabla. I have played tambourine. I have played guitar. I have played drums. I have done backing vocals. So, wow. uh, yeah, yeah, it's just it's, it's been it's been un- and it's, and the keyboard and the keyboard. And, and keyboard also. Yeah. Okay. So Bob is his, uh, Bob's job is the only one that I am yet to take. But okay. rest me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that that's how it happened. So for me, it was always. For me, it was always. Uh, I always uh, wanted to be playing with a drummer who sings the song. Otherwise, drummers don't sing the songs. You know, drummers don't care to learn. Yeah, drummers don't care to uh, learn the lyrics or the melody. So with some way, it completely changed because he has a very melodic. um you know taste as well and not just mechanical drums so so he he knows the lyrics he can sing even if i have a bad throat i know that he can sing it so so it is that's not going to happen <laughs> if he has a bad throat he knows what to do ginger honey hot water and we're on stage okay. <laughs> so i've heard that we almost lost a good musician to to be a cook is that true sambit Sorry, uh, can you rephrase your question? That, I heard that if you weren't a musician, you would have been yeah. a cook. So we have lost a good musician. Is that true? <laughs> um, I I actually run a cooking show also, which is well, which okay. started with the pandemic, and I'm mostly a cook nowadays. I'm less of a musician than most of a cook. So if you want some biryani, some Indian uh, meat, I can I can send it over to Portugal. It'll just take eighty eight days. <laughs> yeah, you know we. Uh, Indian culture in Portugal is mostly uh, carried through food. We have a lot of Indian restaurants, a lot of Indian influences, and uh, yes. I'm a I'm a descendant from Mozambique people, so oh. we also have a lot of food influence, curries uh, of all kinds, and kebabs. Uh, kebabs. And my favorite is the dessert babinka. I don't know if that's said the same babinka. way. Babinka. Babinka. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Uh, uh, you get that in Goa. Oh, okay. where I'm where never, Bob? Yeah, ah, most of you will get bibinka over here. Yeah, oh yeah. It's, um, it's a dessert that almost looks like a pile of pancakes. Yeah. All, all oh. Stack, very very uh, perfect. Yeah, it's layered and layered and layered on yeah, one on top of the other. It's just a it stack. Yeah. Like, uh, it tastes like oh. coconut. Yeah. It does, yeah. Oh. yeah. And it's, it's chocolatey in color? No, 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 no. Uh, no. No, like I mean, like different flavors have different. There's like white and brown. At least the ones that oh, I've seen, okay. interlaced white and brown, white and brown. Tomorrow you are getting it. You're coming to my place, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's like sweet lasagna. Sounds like sweet lasagna. Well, sort of, yeah. Have, uh, it doesn't have uh, anything in between the layers. It's just layers and layers, but no. Yeah. How do you say it? Um, no filling. You have you have no filling exactly. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> no filling in in Bavinka. Uh, yeah. So that's how we get uh, Indian culture here in Portugal. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of music from India getting here. And I know that are a lot of good projects there, uh, modern music and traditional music as well. So how do you see uh, Indian culture being brought to the world through through music? Some bit. You guys want to tell me? Sambit is the one who has uh, toured across all the continents, you know, as musician. So he should be able to I mean, answer this. Apart, I mean, apart. Thank you, but apart from that, I think music and food uh, are the only two basic things that have always kind of traveled. Uh, I mean, through borders. Uh, so I think when you say music, if you mean the recent independent music of India. that is because we've not got a lot of exposure from uh, the labels we most of the music that you see even if it's us or the other bands bob's metal band i mean me and bob we play in the same metal band noise wear or other bands uh, it's because we don't have a lot of 
push from the label because we have something called Bollywood music. I don't know if you've heard of it. Have you heard of Indian yes, like film yes. music? Bollywood. Yes, so yes, see, so which means you have. Movies. So that's what. So see, which means you have heard music. You haven't heard uh, original music. Uh, I mean, that's also original of sorts. But yes. most of the backing that music gets in India are. Uh, film music, which is, I mean, I can pretty well understand by why because they sell so much. The masses accept it. The masses enjoy it. <laughs> Independent music is yet to reach uh, that, yet to get that burst where we kind of enter mainstream market. Uh, though, as we keep searching, is still probably one of the bigger bands in the country because our the language that we speak in, we we sing in, is Hindi. Um, I'm sure you know of Hindi. That's the national language of India. So India has mostly Hindi speakers. So that's uh, why anyway, we have a little bit of a, uh, I, I wouldn't say niche audience, but we still have a larger than compared to an English band, maybe. Uh, I mean, let's say compared to Noiseware, maybe, because uh, people can mostly relate to the songs. They can sing it uh, on an everyday basis. Um, and when they sing, other people connect easily. So and so this is independent music that I was talking about. Now, if you talk about classical music, Indian classical music, I think that's uh, that is the most famous form of music right now in the world. There are people. I mean, my father has students from Japan, Germany, Belgium, America, South America. Uh, I mean, you name it. He has because Indian music is so cerebral and so spiritual at the same time. Uh, it has a huge um, it, it has huge audience coming from the West. Uh, because sometimes West life can become a little strenuous. I mean, life around the world can become a little strenuous because we're always kind of uh, trying to reach uh, a point, but it can become a brim. So which is why the spirituality in Indian music, the meditativeness in Indian music can help people feel calmer, feel better, which is what, which is where uh, the context of as we keep searching comes in is because we are trying to create that bridge uh, because I'm, I'm sure you've heard Sarangi in uh, one of our songs. We have a song called Aspas from our last album, uh, Ru, uh, which features uh, a Sarindi, which is a, a, a few thousand year old instrument. And we're trying to create that bridge um, of Indian classical and post rock and in general music, try and create a fusion, which uh, you can call it world music, you can call it post rock, you can put it in any box, but it is something that we feel that who, which is truly us. So yeah, I think these are the two things. Okay, so for you, it's very important to maintain the, the Hindi language in your songs, right? Uh, not really. It, it uh, is something uh, that we feel, emo it, it really, not only does it stand out, I mean, there are not many people who've heard Hindi lyrics over the kind of instrumentation we have, but we felt it best emotes and creates a very unique character to the song. So it is something that, I mean, that was the underlying basis on which it all started out. But as it built on, it just became a natural part of the music. And we can't even, right now, if we were to consider singing another, another language, it wouldn't really sound as we keep searching, right? Uh, but I mean, there's always room for experimentation ahead. So but for us, say, lyrics was lyrics was never um, important important until our second album Zia. Yeah, for Ru, you, you started to incorporate yeah. lyrics we had, because you had something to share. Because yeah, exactly. Music is universal and it gets everywhere, even without lyrics. Yeah. True. And we were inspired by the music of like mostly by instrumental music and more repetitive music. So uh, lyrics happened to just find its place in the songwriting. And after the song was completed, OK, we can have something over this section, you know, until Rue happened. Rue was very specific to vocals because then we were playing universities in India uh, after our second album. and. People wanted more stories. People were ready to know more about as we keep searching in as stories and hear it, incorporate it, absorb it, and relate to it. So again, we are going back to very less lyrics and more instrumental songs in our next album. Okay. So um, about the, your previous works, 
uh, so you started with the first one in 2015, right? With, with Pop, and then you had yeah. Zia. And by yeah. that time, being a band with only a few years, you had already toured in Russia, and then in yeah. 2018, you toured Europe. How could you do that in such a short time? Well, how could you get to, to, to that touring? Was it easy for you? And I, no, it was not easy, but uh, it was fun. It was fun fighting every day to get um, to make that happen. You know, uh, a lot of people dream about it, but uh, maybe they don't work hard to get it. So for us, it was like relentless dream and then working hard uh, to achieve it. And uh, while uh, just uh, Sambit told you about the independent music not reaching outside of india mostly it's also because india is not a touring country india is not like europe where you can book a van and then go, go yeah <laughs> and you you go you play your show you at least get five people and consider it to be a huge european tour with 20 cities that's like 100 people in your first tour you know even if you have like minimum of five people so so stuff like those are not possible in India. So it's very difficult for any new band to first tour in India to make a noise worldwide. So for us, it worked out because first two, three years, we were uh, constantly working on things which were beyond music, like our stage presence, our uh, light production, the stories that we are telling, the merchandise that we were producing. So all these things created that holistic approach of becoming a brand and more than a band because that's what sells in India and people started taking interest. So now once they come and see us and we were confident that they would love us. So that's how it became uh, quite known in India. And after we were done in India, so we already had that whole uh, experience of touring in India, doing like 11 cities in one go. So for the Zia tour, we were playing like across India from east to west and uh, name it, we were there in most of the cities. So after that, we were constantly approaching different people across we knew through social media and it just worked out. And uh, one day we realized that we are in the flight and we are going to Europe. So it was it was fantastic. Yeah, and I'm sure that was a big adventure. Uh, which country was your favorite? Oh, I'm sure like... It's very hard to just pick one. Yeah, yeah. There were I'm sure so it would be different, different. There were so many unique experiences that we had. Uh, we played, what, 14 shows? Yeah. I think, if I remember correctly, 14 shows is what we had done across mm -hmm. uh, Europe. And uh, the main festival that we had gone there for, Dunk, I mean, obviously that is one of the most memorable shows that uh, for me personally, it was the highlight uh, but every single show had something very unique to offer in terms of the appreciation you got from the crowd, um, the place itself, the bands that we were touring with, Tides of Man and PG Loss, uh, and all the other bands that we got to see at Dunk. It was, it was crazy all of them. Yeah, I know that you were looking forward to, to play Dunk Festival and the Polarjik Festival in Germany as well. Yes, the political festival in Germany as well. Yeah, and I know that you are used to bigger venues and smaller venues. You have already shared your stage with bands like God is an Astronaut or Steven Wilson. Um, how was it for you? Uh, do you prefer to, to be in more intimate places or the big festivals you think are more to, to your kind of music? Um, so initially, I think it started yeah, as like, a, yeah, initially when we were experimenting in the early days, uh, the sound was uh, quite appreciated on big stages. And uh, we also enjoyed it until and unless we came to smaller stage or in a very small club. And we experienced a lot of issues because of sound, like the place could not keep up, you know, the place would rattle. So, and we were happy and, and like, okay, no matter how soft we play in a, on a sound check, but when the show happens and we have like fans sweating right in front and wanting to be there for you. So we get heavy and small places could not take it. But with time, we have changed our set and our sound accordingly to fit in different 
places, different setups. Yes, because uh, I haven't seen you live, unfortunately. Maybe one day we'll cross paths here in Europe or even someplace else. But uh, I've seen online some of your shows and you put on a very intense show. So it must be really fun to, to watch you live. Is it your favorite time to be live on stage? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's those that one hour on stage is what we spend one month preparing towards. So yeah, it's, it's the best time we can possibly have. Okay. So now you're preparing a, a new work, as Udipan said. Uh, do you have anything that you can share with us about that new work that you're doing right now? Sambit? I think we can uh, share the news that we are almost uh, around 75, 77, 80, around that block done, uh, writing, feeling the new material. We uh, have the idea of what we want. We also have the sound, not just the idea. We have recorded parts. Uh, they were in Calcutta last year. That's when we recorded some of the uh, dummy drums just to see where the songs are going. And now I think we are in the process of, I mean, scrutiny. I mean, we can, we can have the leisure to do that. Uh, because we have the time to do it. And that's what we were aiming at, that since we have this time, uh, and Udipan is the one who always kind of keeps pushing, which is, um, which I think, which is great because um, we, we all discussed and accepted on the fact that this is the time that we'll never get back in our lives of being so much at ease with life, you know, uh, might might have been an economically uh, tough time, but it's it's quite rewarding. And this album is, album is the reward to the world that we've, We've got this time to think and feel. So I can't tell you time. I can't tell you, uh, maybe I can tell you number of tracks, maybe seven, eight. Uh, depends on how we're feeling tomorrow. But uh, uh, we can't really tell you when it is going to come out because that is, uh, I mean, there are a lot of business plans attached to it. We have to still plan uh, the time and when, how it is, you know, which is the right bracket because we also don't want to clash. Uh, with the fourth wave, people mostly will be talking about that. I think third wave, not fourth wave. Fourth wave or third wave? Which one? Third. So, yeah, we don't want to. So, we are still planning. So, let's see. We are uh, currently we are waiting for Robert to send us an acoustic track. So, if Robert, <laughs> if Robert remembers when to send it, we'll, we'll, we'll be on, on the right track. We'll come soon. We'll come soon. <laughs> Completely. We'll, we'll be waiting for that new work. Um, yeah, Robert recently got a new bass guitar also. So congratulations to him. He's, he's got he's got an endorsement from Ibanez and he's got a wonderful looking guitar. Can't can't wait to hear it. Yeah, uh, I mean we've already tracked one song on this new bass and can make out it's a significant uh, difference from uh, the previous one. So I'm super excited to get this on all the tracks we've worked on so far. Yeah, we'll be waiting for that as well. Uh, and I know you are a very active band with, with your fans, which you call Gazers. Is that right? Yes. Okay. You you know more than us, I guess. I'm sure you have you have you have researched every bit about yeah. as we keep searching, and it's fantastic to know after a long time. You know, like we don't get to have this kind of a conversation. We we are going back to our senses again of okay. stuff which happened, which is happening. I like and also, this I like probably to has to be one of the most weekend. detailed interview that we've ever. I, I was going to tell them after the after this ends. This has to be such a detailed. You've done individual research. It really feels good for uh, to yeah, give this interview. Thank you so much. I, I like to prepare. I know I'm curious, and I I like to know everything about everyone. So when I have an interview, I I like to research. So that's, that's my awesome. trademark. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, about your fan club. Do you do special things for them? How does it work to be in your fan club? Um, I think like in the fan club, the fans know everything about us in a very personal and intimate way. So they are not just our fans, but they are also a team who is working with us whenever we are doing listening sessions or whenever we need help in their cities. They would be the first ones to come and help, which is a great support system to have. Uh, while being an independent band in India. So I we all consider uh, our fans as our family because we know most of the people in the fan club by their names. We know which city 
uh, they uh, we would see them when we go and play. So definitely, it's a beautiful space to be. In. Seen from your social media lately during the last year that you were talking a lot about mental health and how important it is to be well. And I think your music also helps in that department because it's very soothing, very relaxing. It helps to meditate. Is that important to you to know that your fans are feeling well with your music? Absolutely. I mean, it is. Um... It's the same thing to do with the intention of making not only this but last album that we put, uh, but all the music that we made as a band. It's to get uh, get people not only to connect and relate to it, but sort of in some way provide comfort or company. Uh, and that with the sleep album, I think that really did its job mainly because there were so many people who were uh, isolated at home. And a lot of people who were alone, not even like with company in the house. And one of the things to keep them company is music. They would, you'd always have, I would always have music playing throughout just to make the house not sound dead silent, you know. So um, in that aspect, I think our music has provided comfort to a lot of people based on the reception we've gotten from our fans. So are they very vocal on the social media with you? Do they communicate a lot? We get a lot of emails. We get a lot of uh, messages from them. Uh, throughout the time that we were promoting Sleep, they ended up sending us very, very personal messages about how the album has uh, really helped them and helped them to cope with the current situation and with their uh, current mental state just to get them a little more comfortable and uh, positive. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking now that when Rue came out, um, and I liked it really very much, and I read a, a piece about your work in Kerrang! magazine, mm -hmm. and I thought you must have been so proud to, to get to um, a publication like Kerrang! It's like the Bible for many people that listen to rock and metal. Were you proud? Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Because they have nothing but good things to say about you. Yeah. No, it yeah. was a fantastic experience. It was a highlight. Yeah. yeah. And you know, like, uh, we know we are confident about our release. We are happy. But appreciation do matter. And when appreciation comes from uh, people who are working in Kerrang! or Prog Magazine, it's just a motivation to keep writing and keep doing it again and again and just getting inspired every day. As I was saying a bit ago, uh, music is in the international and in universal language. And uh, of course, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for music between Fort Pill and India. It's a, a long way and we're here sharing this experience and talking about your music. But most of all, music allowed you as a band and as a person to, to be in places and to experience things that maybe otherwise you wouldn't have been able to do. So what was the most important experience in that department? Wow. I think friendship. I think I, I have gained uh, two very good friends who I can be uh, frank with. Uh, that's what music has given me. Uh, and as we keep searching and in general, meeting meeting you, Monica, meeting other wonderful people around the world. I think music gives you uh, friendship because, as you said, you go beyond language. So there's this only feeling that you attach yourself with anyone, uh, be it a music that you don't understand language or be it a music that you don't understand genre wise. Uh, if you connect, you connect and that's it. So the way we see it, I mean, uh, music is not only just sound, I mean, because it's the three of us, it's a mix of three different personalities coming into one song, right? And to be able to do that and go, go and travel and visit places, it makes you think about all the things that you've done to make it possible and try and push that even more just to, to be able to experience it more and more, to be able to share that with more and more people. And we've gotten to meet a lot of uh, wonderful people on this journey that's been five years now. I and mean, we've gotten to travel to a lot of places, meet a lot of different people, and we hope we get to keep doing that. Okay. Do you want to say something, Yudipan, a bit ago? 
for me definitely memories because because of music i have memories and stories to carry forward tomorrow even if music is not there in my life i still have so many beautiful memories that i would always cherish upon so that's the highlight what music has gotten me was the reunion island show one of those memories oh yeah that's where the band became the band you know <laughs> <laughs> it was it was such a lovely oh, oh wow he wow. has that is a glass was, we got man we, we we i don't i can't even remember how many beers we had in this glass so i had to keep this yeah glass. so I this, you can take over yeah sorry so yeah so we went to this beautiful festival there after we played uh, our show called sakifo and we got drunk and we were just enjoying everything about reunion <laughs> we hired a car Three we had a car. Boys who don't know how to drive. <laughs> no, 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 no. They just didn't know how to drive on their roads because everything is oh, the opposite. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's a gorgeous place, right? I've never been there, but uh, I've heard it's a gorgeous place. It's one of the best places in the world. So you're we went to the uh, the volcanic uh, space. Um, then we went to uh, some beautiful waterfall. and we were just driving through the whole day it was it was fantastic it was a fantastic experience see i i, I know sambit is recalling different moments from the trip and he is like i can't stop laughing i can remember this <laughs> okay so that will stay with you forever and that's a really nice thing to know um i was thinking now about your album sleep and i know you've uh, produced some films to go with it well, whose idea was that everyone's everyone's idea we we we, we are Ojibwe, mostly ojibwe mostly no, because you came yeah, with the idea no that we want to make a video yeah go ahead go ahead go ahead definitely yeah but uh, this um, band has always been very uh, interesting in terms of what is after music okay we make music but what's next so everybody gets involved or gets involved with bringing in different art angle to the whole mm -hmm. concept so eventually our album which we think that would be an album turns out to be becoming an, a concept so with concept comes different branches to it like films or music videos or documentaries or taking 20 odd fans to mountain to listen to an album for a listening session so we do that as well like yeah we that? did that we did that and we documented it so we have more documentaries than music videos because we enjoyed that part yeah. so much and uh, it's it's a fantastic experience at the end of the day the whole holistic approach of making an album so memorable so with that our uh, uh, with sleep uh the music demanded a lot of uh visual element to it so we thought why not have music videos and it's 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 not going to be or films it's not going to be as fun as only us making another music video or a film so we collaborated with eight different uh, independent film makers and i remember i remember when we gave the brief it was just we need one shot or just minimal shots it doesn't have to have too many cuts we need it as minimal as possible and it was so difficult for everyone all the filmmakers were we never to, to go with your music it has to be minimal as well yeah but the filmmakers were not ready they were oh this is initially they thought okay fine just take your phone drive through you know but to tell a story with just like one uh, frame going on through 3 to 5 minutes it's difficult but the results which came out from each filmmaker was incredible we still i still watch it on my tv once in a while it's really nice and in fact uh, the challenge came because um, during this process where we were preparing these films the covid-19 pandemics onset had started yeah. and i think two out, out of those films had to be shot during the lockdown that we had going on over here but yeah. we managed to move they the uh, filmmakers who were, were doing those two particular videos they managed to pull it off really really well yeah okay 
Okay, so are you thinking about doing something uh, similar to the next work or is just music, not the visual so much? Uh, we don't know yet. I'm sure we won't be an Indian band. I mean, right now, we are purely focused on getting the music done. It always starts like that, Bob. Yeah, it always, it, it starts, always, it always, always starts like that. And then we end up burning all our cash and then <laughs> investing because the idea is fantastic. We don't care if tomorrow we are hungry and uh, homeless. Well, but manager talking right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the yeah, for the manager. But see, uh, throughout <laughs> the years, Odips, if you remember, throughout the years, every single album has been on the verge of bankruptcy. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, there is no fun. Yeah. Otherwise, there is no fun. Otherwise, we will it's 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 a little uh, for Odips to say that we'll all go hungry. It's a little weird for Odips because he's dating someone who owns a bakery, uh, so you know who's <laughs> not going to go hungry. You know who's not going to go hungry. <laughs> so yeah. guys, this has been really a good time, a fun time to be yes. with you here in more than words. Thank you. Uh, so for the future, for you as a band, what will you keep searching for? Oh. It, it never stops. I mean, uh, it's it's everything. Uh, the meaning of life, uh, love. We uh, were never we were never prepared for the pandemic, and the pandemic has made us search for so many new things. And I'm sure by the time we release the next album, something else will come up, and life just keep, keeps giving you that reason to not stop and just keep moving. Exactly. Yeah. So we can all adapt. Yeah. Yeah. It's always I see. where next from here, right? That is the question I think every single person asks themselves at every single milestone they've reached. It's always where next. So it's that search that keeps going on. Exactly. Would you want to to add something, Sambit? No. I think I think they've, they've kind of answered what the essence of it is. So I think yeah, I'm I'm with with both of them. Exactly. Okay. So uh, thank you so much, guys, for your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Monica. Thank you for, thank you for having us. talking to, to me and talking about your work. And I hope that one day we'll, we'll meet in a festival someplace or maybe if you play Portugal one day. Hopefully, for sure. Yes. We will thank try you. and make that happen. There are a lot of DVDs on your shelf. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a, a movie fan. So it's all series <laughs> and movies and a lot of music too. And some bands yeah. that I know that you also love, like Mono and Steven Wilson and uh, Russian Circles and yeah. a lot of other bands, yeah. Fantastic. I tried to really... also visit India sometime. Should yeah. Also visit India. I'm saying you should also kind of visit India sometime. Oh, it's in my list. So one day I'll I'll definitely go to, to India and I'll give you a call when I'm there. <laughs> yeah, so for sure. The same if you ever come to Portugal, please. Definitely, definitely Monica. Okay. Looking Thank forward so to much. yeah. Bye -bye. Appreciate Thank it. You. Bye bye. Bye. bye.